Hey parents, feeling your baby kick for the first time is such a surreal experience, but beyond the magic of feeling your baby kick, it's a great way to check in on them too, to make sure that they are healthy and happy in mama's womb. Most care providers do recommend kick counting in some fashion, and in this video, I'm walking you through when you should start, how to do it, how to avoid obsessing over it, and when you should talk to your care provider about concerns. I am Bridget, and I'm a childbirth educator, birth doula, and mama, and it's my passion to support families just like yours through pregnancy, birth, and postpartum to receive education and empowerment in the reality that you are built to birth. To stay in the loop with all future videos, make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell right next to it. Kick counting is exactly what it sounds like, counting your baby's kicks. Most mamas start feeling their baby move sometime between weeks 13 and 25 weeks. If you've had more than one baby, it's not unusual to feel your baby move on the earlier end of that time spectrum. And if you're a first time mama, it's not uncommon to feel baby's movements a little bit later. In those earlier weeks, baby's movements feel more like flutters or gas bubbles in your stomach, but as baby continues growing, the movements become more distinct and obvious. Your care provider will often ask you if you've started feeling baby move yet as you progress in your pregnancy. And if you haven't started feeling those movements, it's not necessarily something that should concern you because it doesn't mean that baby isn't moving necessarily. It just may mean that their little movements are hard to discern yet, or it might mean that the position that they're in and the anatomy of your womb is preventing you from feeling much of their movement. For example, women who have an anterior placenta, which is when their placenta attaches to the front of their uterus instead of the back, may have a more challenging time feeling baby's kicks. And if they are kicking towards the placenta, it's going to be challenging to feel that. This was true for me in my second pregnancy. I thought I was feeling kicks around 18 weeks of pregnancy, but they were really faint. And after getting my anatomy scan, I learned that my placenta was in the front of my uterus, which was probably preventing me from feeling most of my baby's movements, especially when she was still so small. As she grew bigger and stronger, her movements became much more noticeable. Now, between about 26 to 28 weeks of pregnancy, it's generally recommended that you begin counting baby's kicks. And the reason for this is because a change in baby's movement in the third trimester is often one of the earliest signs that baby may not be thriving in the womb. So to do this, you'll want to pick a time of day that you can stay somewhat consistent with each day to monitor baby's movements. If you notice your baby is more active during certain times of the day pretty consistently, aim to do your kick counts around that same time each day. For me, in my first pregnancy, my baby would move most late at night, and with my second pregnancy, baby would usually move most in the early morning and sleep at night. Then to set yourself up, you'll want to sit with your feet elevated or laid down on your side, and I recommend getting something cold to drink or sweet to eat to help get your baby up and moving a bit more for you. Every baby is different, so using this time where you're counting kicks is simply a good time to get to know your baby. And one of the ways you'll do this is by tracking how long it takes them to make 10 movements. And if they have hiccups, each hiccup doesn't count as a movement. You're looking for decisions distinct bodily movements, big or small, from your baby. Now, most of the time, it'll take 30 minutes or so to feel those movements, but it might take less time or it might take more time. Every baby is different and every day is different. Note the time that you start focusing on your baby's movements and the time that it takes for you to get those 10 movements. If it takes a little longer for baby to get in those movements one day, that's not necessarily a concern. As you get further along in your pregnancy, baby's movements will change from being more abrupt kicks and punches to movements that seem to roll under your belly or a limb just juts out on one side like baby is stretching for a few seconds. And that's because baby is growing and is taking up more space in your womb. Before we continue, if you've learned something from this video so far and feeling better having learned what you have, there is still so much more empowerment to be experienced through educating yourself. Check out builttobirth.com for more resources on how to have a healthier, happier, and easier birth and postpartum period. There's even a free mini birth class that you can take when you sign up with the link down below. All right, so moving on, your baby's movements don't become 
less as they grow. Their movements simply change. The rule of thumb is that if you're not feeling 10 distinct movements in a two hour time span, you need to notify your care provider to go in and have your baby monitored. Otherwise, it's important to remember that your baby is not a robot working on a schedule. Just like you don't always have the same level of activity each day, your baby doesn't either. It can be easy to obsess over kick count, so I want to help you reframe how you think about this time that you get to spend with your baby each day. Think about it like a coffee date you're spending with someone you really like but don't really know too much about. This is great time to spend getting to know the baby that's inside your womb through creating a peaceful internal environment for you to connect with each other. Plus, babies feed off of mama's emotions, so making purposeful time in your day to relax and share the peace and calm with them is so valuable. On top of that, learning how to quiet your mind, body, and heart can help in preparation for labor because so much of labor is about using your mind, body, and emotional connection to fully relax and allow your body and baby to work together. Learning how to create stillness by focusing on your deep breathing is so helpful in remaining peaceful and present with your baby throughout pregnancy and then staying calm and relaxed throughout labor. So remembering that your baby isn't a robot that acts the same exact way every day and being patient with them entering into your time together to connect and get to know your baby and using that time as practice for calming your thoughts and your body are all great ways to make use of the time that you spend each day with your baby as you feel for their movements. The big thing that you want to focus on is whether your baby is moving in a way that is consistent with themselves. You might even have a care provider who doesn't necessarily ask you to do kick counts, but just whether or not you're feeling baby move regularly. So that wraps up our video about kick counts. It's amazing how much better we feel when we get our questions answered. So if you still have questions regarding how to spend the rest of your pregnancy preparing for birth and postpartum, check out the full Built to Birth online class linked down below in the description. Or if you're not quite ready to jump into committing to that full course, check out that free mini birth class that I mentioned earlier linked down below. I hope you get to go enjoy some time with your baby now and thanks for being with me in this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.